now is your fault Still your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so good
Hey, good morning, Lake Gaston Christian Life Center. How are we today? Everybody ready to worship Jesus? Give him a praise offering this morning. Amen. Hey, it is good to be in God's house. I know there's some that are still coming in. And as we begin this morning, I'd like to begin in prayer. We've got a handful that, that are sick or have had some type of an exposure, so they're having to stay in. And I, I just I want to say also that I appreciate the responsibility that people show. You know, if you've had some type of an exposure to follow those type rules, to, to quarantine, to stay back, to be respectful of others. And so I appreciate that. Uh, keep in mind, you know, we, we got a long term here, right? We got a lot of Sundays to go, and fortunately we're online. So I know we got some of them joining us online this morning. And so I'm going to ask the ushers if they would come. And ushers, if, as you come to prepare to receive the morning tithe and offering, I want to ask everybody to stand with me. So ushers, if you guys come on up. Come on up, guys. And uh, if you stand with me, we're going to pray. And as we pray, we're going to pray not just for the service, but we're going to pray for those that are at home this morning, those that are sick this morning, and we're going to pray for their full recovery. Father, we just give you praise and we thank you, God, that we know that you are here today. Jesus, you said that where two or three are gathered in your name, that there you are in the midst of them. And so we know and we recognize your presence here this morning. We ask God today that your glory would be fulfilled in this house. And Lord, this morning we're, we're empty, we're hurt. The Bible says that one part, when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. And so Lord, today we pray for those that are home that are sick or that they are taking precaution. We just ask you this morning, God, for healing. Father, that right now, in Jesus' name, this virus, the virus does not have to take what the doctors say. But God, that your word says that they are healed. I pray for those, God, today that maybe it's not with the virus, they're sick from something else. Lord, right now, you are healer, and we claim that word over them right now. And God, as we go into praise and worship this morning, we come with our mind focused on you. Lord, I pray whether in this church or in the homes where this is being viewed today, God, that you're going to be glorified, Lord, that you're going to make each of those homes your sanctuary, and that this house is going to be filled with your presence. And God, today we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bring our tithe and offering, fellowship a bit, but let's rejoice and celebrate Jesus as the choir ministers to us this morning in song.
test, 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 test. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Praise the Lord. We are back in the house of the Lord. Let these words bless you in some way today. today. Uh, you know, worship, especially in Pentecostal settings, sometimes we focus so much on what we feel. Worship is not about what we feel. Worship is what God is worthy of. We're, 
Where, and so this morning, I want to encourage you. Let's give to God all praise. Let's give to God the honor that is due to him. And so let's focus on him this morning and that he's going to abound in this place. Amen? Good morning. Dude, I know we're up and down and up and down. If you are able, please stand and worship with us this morning.
God so loved the world.
the fullness of your shalom, your peace, and your presence, your healing, your provision, your passion, your heart to fulfill this house, God. Fill this house with your Shekinah glory. Let the revival come. Let this house, God, become a beacon of praise, of a hope, of a life, of a light, of liberty, of a healing. Of your, of your goodness, Father God. God. Let heaven, heaven and earth can connect, connect right, right here, God. God. Let it come together. Let this become, this become Eden. Eden. Father, your, your garden, your garden, garden of delight, delight that, that every person will experience your, your knee-buckling life, changing, breathtaking beauty and grace.
I praise you that there is no sickness that can exist in your presence. God, that you are healer, you are deliverer. God, today we just give you praise. We declare, God, that the enemy is defeated. And God, that your will is being done. God, I praise you today that you stand here to the broken heart. God, that you have chosen the one who feels rejected. God, today, that you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. God, your anointing on the remainder of this service today, our children as they go in the kids' zone, God, that you will bless and you will keep them, that they will learn more of you today. God, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. And we give you the praise now, in Jesus' name, amen. Before you're seated, give God a praise offering this morning, amen. God is good. You can be seated if you'd like to be. Kids can head on out to Kids Church today. It's going to be a great time. Great time for them. Super kids. Super kids. we got super kids, don't we? That's great. Super kids can head on out. And so remember, uh, they're going to be in what, what was the youth room. Now we're going to call it super kids room, I guess. And so, so parents, when church is over, be sure, sure to go out and pick up, up kids. kids. So the so kids, kids will not be dismissed to come back, back in. in. Parents, you'll have, have to go there. Julie's teaching, teaching today. I'd, I'd like, like to go to lunch. lunch. So, so don't, don't wait till you get back from lunch to pick, pick up your kids. kids. When, when church is over, please be sure, sure to do that. that. Also, just, just a quick, quick announcement. Uh, here coming up in a few weeks, we're going to do a back-to-school Sunday. They went out and purchased a lot of backpacks already. Uh, if, if you would like, like to bring, bring in school supplies, or there's a list in the bulletin of what that is in the wood box out here in the foyer area. You can put your school supplies in with that. If you'd like to make a donation towards that, uh, everything's going to be covered. We already know that. So if you'd like to make a donation towards that, that would be wonderful. If you'd like, again, if you'd like to purchase school supplies, you can purchase those and bring them in. 
it's, it's going to be an exciting, exciting time, time, you know, and, and we're, we're trying to, we're trying to provide this for the kids that are here, and so uh, we're already seeing an increase, I think, I think the plan now is 20, I think that's the plan, either 20 or 25 that they're, they're planning. planning. I, can't I can't wait, wait to that, that Sunday when all the kids stand up here because it's going to blow your mind and see all the kids up there. The backpack's going to be great. So, so I'm going to come, come down, down here, Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles. Today's, today's message is probably, probably going to be a little bit different, more, probably more teaching than it is preaching. I think I told you a few weeks back, maybe a couple months back, I had a good friend of mine in a previous church. Almost every Sunday he'd ask me, are you preaching or teaching? I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I knew for sure, sure. Sometimes, sometimes I didn't know. Today would be one of those, I don't know. I'm probably teaching more than I am preaching. So, uh, but stay with me. I, I, I think, think it's going to be good. I think there's some good, good information, information for us, though, right? right? So, so whether, whether I'm shouting it at the top of my lungs or I'm just telling it to you, it's going to be good. Can I get an amen to that? All right, Matthew chapter 6. This is actually a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture. Almost everybody has heard of it. And so, and so if you'd, you'd like, like to read along with me, or we've got it up here, after this matter, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. If you would put that first verse up there for me again, though, uh, verse number nine, I want to show you something. So the beginning of this, and we refer to this, we refer to this as the Lord's Prayer, and almost everybody's heard it, almost everybody has said it. Uh, when I was a boy, I had a picture of this. My, my mom, it wasn't something I purchased. My mom, and she knew what she was doing. She put it, she put a picture of it on my wall, so I could read it. I read it all the time growing up. It was a, like an embroidery type thing, and so that was on my wall growing up, the Lord's Prayer. And there have been countless sermons preached, so I want to tell you right now, I don't expect I'm going to tell you anything new. If you've been in church for any amount of time and you've heard sermons on this, there's a hundred, there's probably a hundred different approaches to how to preach this, what to preach. Uh, but, but we started a, a couple of weeks ago talking about prayer. And, and we're, we're going, going to use this. So if you see Jesus, he said this, after this manner. You guys see that? After this manner. Now, now there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with praying the Lord's Prayer. In fact, I think it's an awesome prayer to pray. But the reality is what Jesus says here is this is a type. This is a layout of how you should pray. And so he's giving us an example of prayer. And what, and what I want to do over the next few weeks is just break this down. And today, we're going to, we're going to focus on just the very first part, our Father. That's the part we're going to focus on. Now, the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about, approach, or I guess, uh, perspectives of prayer, what it means and how to apply it, because what we're going to be able to do when this series is over is we're going to take these truths into our own personal prayer time. And so... Yeah, you know, I've, I've been, been in church, church my whole life. We've, We've pastored the last 20 plus 25, 25 years. And, and in all that time, whether attending church or pastoring churches, churches men's groups, uh, fellowships with pastors, one, one thing, thing that I've heard consistently is this. Is most Christians are not satisfied with their own prayer, prayer time. time. Myself, Myself included. included. Most, most of, of us are not satisfied with how we pray. pray. In, in fact, prayer, prayer time for many of us is a frustration. We pray... But, but it's still, still kind of a frustration because a lot of us think I should be praying more. I, some of us might think I could be praying better. Some of us think it's not really effective. I don't feel like I'm effective when I pray. And the natural result of that is this. We pray less. It's unfortunate, but that's what happens. And what we need to be able to do as Christians is we need to be able to acknowledge that, but then approach it differently and then say, so how can I make it better? And one, and one of the ways we can make it better is what we're going to do over the next few weeks is we're going to step back and we're going to see after this manner. So we're going to see what I can do in my prayer time to make myself more effective. I've shared this with a few people already. Uh, when Julie and I first got married, you know, we were young. We were 18 years old at the time. Actually, we were married right before our 18th birthdays. 
18 years old, I remember sitting in our first apartment, and I remember it vividly. We had, how many of you, when you first got married, had hand-me-down furniture? Anybody have hand-me-down furniture? We, we had, had this old recliner, recliner that did not lean all the way back, back. it leaned back, back to the right. right. You know, it's like, like when you went back, back you just you had a lid at an angle. That was it. We had, we had, we had hand-me-down, hand-me-down furniture. You know, we had second, third generation furniture. But our pastor preached this series on learning to pray, or how to pray. So I was 18, I'm 52 now, so I've had a lot of years to add to it. But I will never forget what he preached or what he taught. And I remember at 18 years old beginning to learn how to pray, how to approach the throne. And one of the things that he taught us was about how to prepare to pray. And we'll talk about that at some point. That's separate than the prayer itself. And so, and so I would, would spend, spend a lot of time, not hours, but I would spend a lot of time preparing to pray. Because, because what our pastor taught us was this. This, this, is, this, is, this is how I've extrapolated it over, over the years. I don't remember exactly what he said, what he said but, but this, this is, is what I've extrapolated over the years, and that's this. this. If, if I wanted, I wanted to, go to go to my boss and ask my boss for a raise, I would think very carefully about what I said. How many of you would agree with that? I would have good reasoning for what I wanted. I can't just go to my boss and say, I want to raise. I have to go to my boss to prove why I want to raise. How many of you know that, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to tell her I'm on time every day. And I work hard and I've done this project and I've done that project. And here's the scope. This is what the pay rate is for other companies. I have my reasoning, yes. If I wanted to go to a bank and get a loan... And, and you know, in those days, we actually talked talk to a banker, not just something on the computer. You know, you, know, you would sit down, this, this is what, what I want to do. This, this is the result of what it's going to be. be. This, this is how we're going to do it. This, this is how it's going to increase the value of my house. house. This, this is how it's going to help my business. I have a reasoning. And so what I learned at 18 years old is that when we pray, we should put some thought into what we're going to pray. Now, that, that doesn't apply every time, because, you, you know, like when you're driving, driving down, down the road, your car starts to go off the road, you ain't, you ain't got, got time to pray but one thing, right? Or right, right now. now. But, but, when, but in normal day-to-day -day life, just to put some thought into this. And so I remember at 18 years old, before I would go into my prayer time, I'd click, click back in my crooked recliner, and I'd have a Bible and a notebook, and I would begin to write down what I was going to pray for. And, and I would begin, begin to put, put scripture, scripture, I'd go find scripture for why I thought I could pray for that. And, and then, then when I went into my prayer time, I have my notebook, I have my Bible, and I would begin to pray. pray. And, and I would go down that list, list and I would check off that list, list one at a time. time. You, see, you see, we don't, don't teach prayer like that. that. We, we teach prayer like everything's got to come out of your mind, and if you open your eyes one time, you're not praying. How many think? How many feel like that? You know it's not right, but how many feel like that? You open your eyes one time, you're not praying anymore. That's, That's not, not it. it. I'm, I'm in the presence, presence of God. I'm talking to Jesus. And, and if, if i got to stop for a second and look up a Bible verse, I'm still on the clock. I'm still praying. It's still my prayer time. And so we're going to talk about that over the next few weeks, but today we're going to focus just on this first part, our Father. This is not about what we're going to say, but this is about the mindset that we have when we pray. Jesus said, Our Father. Our Father. First, First I, I, I wasn't, wasn't planning on saying this, this but I like that, that word, our. Because if, if I say it's our, if Jesus says it's ours, ours he's included, included in that, right? Our Father. So that's, that's my Father, and that's Jesus' Father. That's, that's Rick's Father, and that's Jesus' Father. That's all of our fathers, and that's Jesus' Father. He's right there in the mix of it, Yes. So the first thing I want to talk about, the, actually the only thing I want to talk about today, is your perspective on how you see God. And I hope that by the end of the time that we're at this session where you can see God as Father. You see, a lot of us, we see God as God of the universe who can do all things. How many of you know God can do all things? Amen? God is all powerful. He can do all things. He's omnipotent, meaning he's all powerful. He's omniscient, meaning he's all knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. That's God. Amen? How many of you know that God judges, especially God Old Testament theory, the Old Testament history? You know God's a judge. God is strong and he holds us to account. But the Bible, and that's all, these things are all true. And, but, but if that's your approach to God, you're missing a personality. 
You're missing a personableness. Jesus didn't say, when you pray, pray, God of all the universe. He didn't say, when you pray, pray most powerful, most excellent, all-knowing God. He said, when you pray, pray how? That's an awesome thought. Our Father. And you see, one of the reasons that this is so important is because this is about relationships. And everything is about relationship. This, this past week, week at Charles Wright, Charles Wright's funeral, 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 funeral. funeral. This, this was sound, this was sound kind of odd, odd. But, but there was this young boy walking down the center aisle. And he, and he was, was walking down, down the center aisle. aisle. This, this was the thought that I had. had. How many of you know the Holy Spirit, Spirit speaks to you back and forth in your own mind? Yes. And he prompts the thoughts. So, so as, as this boy was walking down, down the aisle, I thought, I thought to myself, I thought, God, God why, why did you make humans like you did? That we are so dependent for so long. This boy was only six or seven years old. I don't know where his parents was. He was very well behaved. He was just walking down the aisle. This boy wasn't doing anything noticeable except that this guy who's sitting at the back of the row, back of the church or the chapel, having a conversation with God, and I say, God, why are we so different than all the other mammals? Now, I'm not very smart, so I had to look some of this stuff up, okay? So, did you know, you guys may or may not know this. Now, you know, as, an, as humans, at 18, year old, 18 years old, we're considered adults. But I'm looking around in here, we got everybody here, most of everybody in here is over 18, and, and a lot, lot of you have raised children that are now older than 18. So let's, let's look back, and I want to just take a real quick poll. How many of you at 18 looked at your own child at 18 years old and said, now that kid is responsible enough to go out and live in the world and change the world? And right there at that moment, how many of you looked at your child and said, that child has reached his zenith in growth? Anybody? Yeah, yeah some, some of them still, still have it, but how many, How many of you, you look at that, that child and said, re- well, now, actually, this one might get some hands raised. I'm ready for them to go. How many, How many of them look at your child and said, they're ready to go? You guys, you guys see what I'm saying? So, so, so I, I looked this up. up. And I've got to go back, back and get my, my, my notes here. Chimpanzees, because the scientists say those are the closest to us, I guess. Chimpanzees become mature adults at the ages of 13 to 15. And sometimes after 12, they leave their moms. Now, now that would be, be cool. wouldn't that be cool on a human, human side if at 13 years old you could tell your teenager, <laughs> you're old enough now, buddy? The world couldn't handle it, could they? But how many of no, you, let's take like, like, this, this is a quick poll. poll. How, how many, many of you as parents at 13, 13 to 15 would have been ready, ready to do, do that, that, right? But that's, that's what they do in the chimpanzee world. 12 years old, out you go. No longer taking care of my mom. Gorillas reach maturity around 12 years old and get this. Become, become independent, independent around, around three. three. Pretty, Pretty incredible, incredible, right? Now, now I, didn't I didn't know that, that at the time. At the time, I mean, God just having, having this conversation. conversation I, I say, God, why, why, why didn't you make us like everybody else? else? Now, now part, part of my part of the humor that I have is me and Jesus. I say, I'm glad we're not like elephants. Their babies are 250 pounds. That would be pretty rough, right? But of course, if the woman weighs 6,000 pounds, maybe 250 pound elephant isn't so bad. But then, as I'm watching this boy, I'm just like, God, why? Why is it different? And then Holy Spirit spoke. Do you know you can ask God non-theological questions, and if you really want to know, God will give you the answer. And so I did. I'm asking the Lord, why are, why are we so different from everybody else? And, and God spoke to me, and, and for I could have understanding, and that's this. Because how important it is for us to understand a family relationship. Meaning, a monkey doesn't have to get saved. An elephant doesn't have to get saved. There is no part of God's created kingdom outside of human beings that God wants them to see him as father. And so part of the reason that we're created the way that we are, and we are as dependent for as long as what we are, and I understand that even in this room, not everybody has great stories of family. Not everybody has great stories of mom and dad. 
And, and I, I want to ask you this morning, first, first I would say, I'm sorry, sorry that you've had a, a, a bad experience. experience. But, but I, I want, want you to focus this morning on the ideal experience. What, what a dad, dad should have been. been. What, what a mom should have been. And what, what I want to say to you this morning is this. this. One, one reason, reason that we're in the system that we are, that we are as dependent on one another as what we are, is because God wants us to see him as father. But, but the only way that God could see him, see, for us to see him as father is we have to be in a system in which we see a father is needed. And, and when, when you, you look, look at the family system and you see the way the dynamic is, is when, we're, when, we're, when we're young, our parents take care of us, and some of, us, some of you will know this next phrase, but, but when, when they're, they're old, what happens? The kids take care of the parents. And all of that is for the same reason that we could learn what it means and how important it is to have a father. It's about a family relationship. So you may not have a great father experience, family relationship. Again, I would apologize for that, but I want you to focus this morning on the ideal. And I want you to see this morning how important it is that we understand this first thing that Jesus said, our father. I read, I read a funny, a funny, a funny little, little story this week. week. I, don't I don't remember her name, but it was John Wayne's granddaughter. And John Wayne's granddaughter, who's now, I guess, in her 70s, she's telling the story from when she was a kid. And she knew her grandpa, but she knew him more. Uh, you know, she's not, not necessarily not as personal. She wasn't as close to him physically, but she knew who her grandpa was. And she said, and I remember going to school asking the other kids, what channel is your grandpa on? Pretty funny, huh? You see, she's, she's got, got an idea, idea yeah? yeah? And, and so, you know, this morning, one, one of the battles that we, if you did not have, have a good experience, one of the battles that we face is having an experience with a father. So, so again, again, I want to encourage, encourage you, let's focus, focus on, on the ideal, ideal. Not, not on what you had. None, none of us have perfect fathers. fathers. I know, I know there's, there's, a, there's a Marine down, down in Camp Lejeune. There's, there's another, another young, young man in Lafayette, Indiana, Indiana and, there's and there's a young girl in Waysville, Indiana, that the three of them would tell you they did not have a perfect dad. But, but I, I hope, hope they, they can, can tell you that they know, know how important that is. is. And this, this morning, morning as we, we go through this, and we look at I've got, got, got a lot of scriptures I want to go over with you. The first thing I want to teach is this, and I want, I want you to see, is that God is generous. God, God is, is generous. generous. Say that with, that with me. God is generous. James chapter 1, 1 verse 5 says this. this. If, if any, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. I want, I want you to focus this morning on one word, word in that verse, liberally. How does God give? Answer that. How does God give? Liberally. You realize we can look all, we, look, we need to look at creation because creation is God's work. And I know that we could go back and we could argue with the theologians on did God create it all or did he just create a few and it's got to wherever it is and that's a whole other argument that we can't have for today. But we can look at what we can have today and we can say this. I don't know exactly what was created when God created all the fish, God created all the animals, but whatever was created then, God put it within what he created for us to have what we have now. It's not random events. It's a process that, it was, that is the result of the DNA of what God created. And so when I look around, isn't it amazing how many different things there are? Isn't, isn't it amazing, amazing even dogs, dogs, you know, I love, love my dog, but isn't, isn't it amazing how many, how many different, different dogs, dogs there are? Yesterday, we went, we went down, down to, uh, we, we was, I never, never Pocosin, 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 Virginia. First, First time I'd, I'd ever been there. And we, and we said, said, if we're this close, close to the ocean, ocean we're going to the ocean. ocean. And so, so we drove down, down a little bit further. But there, there we was at Pocosin. Pocosin. We're, we're walking, walking along the side. We're walking along the uh, little goalie there. there. And, and Julie, Julie says, what is that down there? And I wasn't seeing what she was looking at. She goes, it looks like it's some kind of bug. It's got this little big, big white spot on it. And, and we're, we're looking and we're looking and she goes, there it is. And then, and then we, we stopped, stopped and we looked and there's, there's like a dozen little, little crab things, things crawling out of the holes. And and you, don't you don't see those, those in Indiana. Indiana. So, so we were pretty amazed, amazed at it. God's awesome. God is awesome. Driving, even driving, even driving all these trees, trees. I told, told Julie many, many times, I did not know I was a tree person. person. I probably should learn about, about the different, different kind of trees that, that there are. I love these trees. trees. I love the woods. I love the look. Oh, but there's all kinds of trees. 
colors? Now, now I'm, I, don't I don't have, have I'm, I'm not color blind, blind but, but I don't, I don't have, have an eye for colors. Color. So, so at certain, certain points, points I, lose I lose the ability to tell shades. I think that's, that's pretty common. common. So, so like you look, look at West's shirt, shirt and then it's got, got different shades of blue, I guess that is. is. At, at some, some point, point I miss the ability to see one shade, shade or another, another right? right? But, but you, you know, know, where did all of that come from? from? And, you, and you, you see, one person could argue, well, well that, that was just, just you know, that's, that's just the product. product. But, but you know, even God, God have you ever thought of it this way? Wes, would you stand up for a second? Don't put him on camera, but everybody else just look at Wes. Look at all those colors. Not only, now I want to say something differently, okay? Now think about this. Not only do the colors exist, but God has created your eye to see it. Right? Go ahead and see. Because I've got a friend of mine, friend of mine that's colorblind. He can't, he can't tell, tell the, the difference between, between different, different colors. colors. One, of One of the funny stories that I have from when I was a kid is my grandma one time bought my grandpa the, the brightest color green pants that you've ever seen. seen. And my, my grandpa, grandpa wore them and strutted around like a peacock when he wore, wore them. So, so my, my grandma, because I, I love, love my grandparents, my, my grandma thought I would, I would like that same pair of pants. So she bought me the same pair of green pants. I'm maybe, maybe 10, 10 or 11, 11 years old. old. I, was I was old enough, enough not want to wear green pants. And she, she wanted, wanted to go out to dinner one night and wanted, wanted me and my grandpa to wear both of us the green pants to the same dinner. I did not want to wear these green pants. And Cheryl, my grandma, said, but your grandpa, he loves them. And he was smiling and then he had these pants on. So I reluctantly, I wore those pants. Wore them to dinner. I hated that. I didn't love the dinner. I hated how I felt. I hated these stupid pants. But there's my grandpa. He's smiling. He loves those pants. And I found out later my grandpa was colorblind. He had no idea what color pants he had on. God is generous. God is generous. You look at all of creation. He didn't, he didn't just give us one thing. thing. I, I don't know, know why every piece of wild animal, animal meat tastes, tastes like chicken. That's, that's the only thing I can't figure out. out. But, but he, he gave, gave us a lot of stuff. God's, God's a generous God. God. How many, How many of you would agree with that? that? God, God is generous, yes? yes? I want to show, show you one more thing. I want to show you another thing. God's a giver. Let me show you a couple of verses here. Matthew 7, 11. If you then being evil... Know how, how to give, give good, good gifts to your, your children? How much, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? God's, God's a giver. giver. He's, he's generous. He's, he's a, a giver. giver. You know, you know it, 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 he's, he's got, got this mentality. God, God wants, wants to give. give. The, next the next verse, verse Matthew 6, 6 8, 8 says, says this. Be not, not therefore, therefore like unto them, them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask Him. So, so not only is he generous, he, and he's a giver, he knows what you need even before you ask him. And this is, this is important, and this will come up later on when we're talking deeper into the prayer words, give us, give us our daily, you know, to, to give us our needs, to give us our daily bread. God knows what you need before you ask him. But most of the time, a lot of us in our prayer time, we spend a lot of time informing God why we need it. We spend, we spend a lot of time informing God what's going to happen if we don't get it. In fact, some of us spend a lot of time telling God exactly what he needs to do to get it to us. But he already knows. I want you to see this in the nature of God. He is a generous God. We're not even talking about Father yet. You know, whenever I was a boy, my sister, she's four years older than me. Four or five years older than me. She had a ton of friends coming through our house all the time. And at some point, these friends begin to call my mom, well, yes, what do you want to guess? Mom. I thought only girls did that. So we had all these girls come through my house, and I understand that whenever I got a little bit older, I had, I had a handful of friends, and not all of them, but one or two would call my mom, mom. Most of the time, most of the time, you didn't say anything, you know, but, but I get why they did it. Because they were at my house too much just to call her Mrs. Edmondson. But there was no way you're using first name that's disrespectful. We grew up in that era of time that was disrespectful, right? So they just adopted the term. Mom. Mom. 
So, so my, my friend, friend would come over, my sister's, sister's friends would come over. Hi, mom, hi, whoever, you know. Hi. Okay, and, and everything's good. good. But, but you, you know what? what? No matter the fact that they, they was calling her mom, this thing, thing and, and this thing, thing I knew, my mom knew who her kids were. My mom knew who her kids were. She was never mistaken. No matter how many people called her mom, she knew who her kids were. And when, and when we, we talk, talk about, about Father God, God those, and those kids knew attributes of my mom. mom. They, they knew, knew my mom was a loving mom. They, they knew my mom was a giving mom. mom. They, they knew my mom opened open her house to her. her. They, they knew, knew those attributes. attributes. And, and they, they called her mom. But, but the reality is this, this they, they weren't her children. And so I can tell you this morning that God is a giving God and God is a generous God and God already knows what you need before you ask Him. And that's one, and that's a general knowledge of God. But Jesus didn't say, pray, oh generous God. Oh good giving God. Jesus said, pray how? Our, we pray from a relationship base, not a knowledge base. We pray, we pray our, our Father, not, not even according, according to his, his attributes. We pray according to our relationship with him. him. Our Father. God, God is a generous God. God, God is, is a giver. But God knows who belongs to him. him. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.19 says this. The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. You guys see that? The Lord knows them that are His. Church, let me tell you today, there are a lot of people in this world today that want to call on God, but then they might even use the label of a father, but God knows who belongs to Him. And there is a very clear distinction between those who are gods and those who are not gods, those who belong to Him and those who do not. And the distinction is those who have accepted Christ. Jesus is the key to all of this. When Jesus said, when you pray, you pray, our Father. It brings us into a relationship with God. So it's not just about having the title. Remember, like I said, kids came into my house, and some of you probably had the same thing. Kids came into your house, and they called you dad, or they called you mom. But the reality is, those kids weren't your kids. They had access to you because of your child. They enjoyed benefits of you because of your child, but they were not your children. And it's the same thing in the world that we live today. How many of you know the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust? I believe with all my heart that there are some people and there are some businesses that have experienced blessing simply because the children of God are there. There are people who have experienced blessing because the children of God are there. Meaning they're the kid that comes over and says, Hi, Mom, hi, Dad. They're not in a relationship, but they're close enough to the child that they get the benefit of the relationship. We had kids that spent the night at our house to call Mom, Mom, and they were at our house, and their own home life was not good. But for a moment, because of their relationship with a child in a healthy home, they got a night of peace, they got a night of comfort, they got a night of provision. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, they did not have a relationship. And we have got to be a people today that understand that God makes distinctions. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament, the law was a schoolmaster intended to lead us to Christ. One of the things that we see in the law is God makes clear distinctions between who belongs to Him and who does not belong to Him. And it's all through Scripture, and God doesn't change. But the great thing that we also see in Scripture is this. God has always made a way for anyone and everyone to come to Him. You say, well, that's not true because in the Old Testament you had the, you had the law of Moses and only those individuals that were came, that only the Jews could come. But do you know that even within the law there's a provision in there that a stranger can come and a stranger can decide that he wants to become a part of it. And in that sense, though he's not an Israelite, he can become part of Israel. He can become circumcised and his whole family can come in. So what we see in Scripture is Father God is always making a distinction there's always going to be those that belong to me and those that don't belong to me, but I'm always going to make a way for anybody who wants to belong that they can come in. 
In the Old Testament, they came through the law, they came through certain tradition, but now through Jesus, they come by Him. And so that means that no matter what color your skin, no matter what part of the world you're from, no matter what language you speak, when you call upon Jesus, you have access not just to the God of the universe, not to the God who can do anything, but to Father. 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 And not just the father of the Billy Grahams of the world. Not just the father that's done all these great things. But to the father of the beggar. The father of the downhearted. The father of the one that's been overlooked. He's still our father. And we come to him in that way. So our father. You've been adopted today. Romans 8.15. Romans 8, 15. The Bible says you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay, I said to you earlier, I want you to maybe set aside what your experience is and consider the ideal. This is, this is how we can do that. Is that when, we, when you became saved, what the Bible says is this, you became, you became adopted. You became adopted. And God changed your position. And he became your father. And when we look at this and this term, Abba, Father, that term Abba, uh, it's, it's a term of endearment. I think most people teach it that that equates to, in English, we would say daddy. Now, I've, I've always been, I've, I've, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, I've always struggled calling God my daddy. I didn't call my dad my daddy. For a lot of us men, that's a struggle, daddy. Because that daddy makes you feel a little babyish. You know what I'm saying, Rick? Makes you feel a little babyish. Julie, she's still, her dad's been, her dad's been passed away for two years. She still refers to him as daddy. But that's who God is to me. And church, that's who God needs to be to all of us. You see, the thing, the thing that we learn from Scripture is that he wants to be, he is your father. But the most powerful and effective prayer is when we start with being his children. Our father. Okay, can you ever imagine starting your prayer off like this? Dad. Right? Jesus, Jesus said to pray, pray how? Our Father. Okay? But we look, we look in Scripture, scripture and we say, well, we got, got adopted. Because if, if, if we're using, we're using English as our standard, standard which, which one is more intimate, Father or Dad? Dad. So, so when we got adopted, Scripture says he became what? What spirit, spirit came over us? Spirit of adoption, and we, we cry out what? Abba, Abba Father, Abba, Abba means dad. dad, daddy. Consider for a moment the change in your own mindset when your prayer starts off. Dad. Dad. When my prayer starts off, God, Father God, even Father God, God in English, English, Father God. God. Pretty, pretty formal. formal. Pretty formal. formal. Now, now I'm going to lay out my petitions. petitions. I'll, I'll make, make my, my request. Dad. And what, what attributes do we talk about, about our dad? God, God is what? What, 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 what is God? God? He is generous and he is a giver. He knows, he knows what, what I need before I ask him. What's, What's the, the difference, difference in my mindset when I come to him thinking that? Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. When, when my dad, dad was alive, hey, Dad. dad. My, my grandson, grandson that's, that's how my, my grandson started. started as he's getting, getting older, it's starting, starting to change. change. But that's, that's how, how he started about 90% of his sentences. Hey, Grandpa. 
Hey, hey Grandpa. Grandpa. Hey, hey Grandpa, Grandpa melts, melts my heart. heart. Man, Man, I'm ready. Pull out the pocketbook, I'm ready. Hey, hey Grandpa. Grandpa. When, when I, go I go to pray, pray and I say, hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. I'm, I'm really struggling. struggling. Now, now put, put it in, in the, the uh, if, if you, you don't, don't have, have the experience, put it in the ideal. If you do have the experience, live it. You've you got, got a need, need to go to your natural, natural father. father. Maybe, maybe you need a car, car fixed, fixed. Maybe, maybe you need some money. money. Maybe, maybe you just, just need some, some advice. And you just open that door and you start, start the conversation. conversation. Hey, hey, Dad. How many of you envision your father turning stone cold? Anybody? How many of you envision your father starting to pay real attention to what you're getting ready to say? How many of you envision your father starting to change his calendar to accommodate what your situation is? Anybody? How many of you think of your dad as... Completely willing, willing, if at all possible, to say yes to what you're getting ready to ask. Right? See, that's why it's important when Jesus said, when you pray, this is how you should pray. Our Father. Our Father. On what grounds do I pray that? Because the Scripture says, I've been adopted in. I've been adopted in. I don't know if any of you have been adopted. We have some friends that have adopted kids who are now grown kids. I've yet to hear one story of a parent who adopted a child and raised that child as if they were in the conditions that they came from. So we have, we have a friend who adopted a child, I think, from China. But when she raised her child who was from China, she raised her child according to American standard and luxury, not according to what that child would have had in China. She was adopted in, and she got the family benefit. You follow me? You go over, you see people adopting kids from Russia, from other parts of the world, and when they come to this country, they don't get raises if they're still over there. What would happen in America if an American family adopted a child from a third world country and then fed that child dirty water and rice because all that's all that child would have got when the child was born. What would happen to that family? Right? That'd be horrible, wouldn't it? The Bible says that you and I have been adopted into the family of God. We, we have a new spirit on us that allows us to cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, or Dad. God's not going to raise you the way that you were without Him, and He's not going to limit your access to what you had before Him. You're adopted as a child. Let me show you another verse. John 1, chapter 12. It says, as many as received him, John 1, verse 12. As many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Okay, that's an awesome verse. I want you to see the next verse, though. Which were born not, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What does that mean? It means that it was God's will for you to be brought into his family. We have three kids. We planned one. We have three kids. We planned one. I was glad we had all of them. But when we got married, you know how many I said I wanted? None of them. I wanted zero. Julie wanted three. The joke is this. Julie wanted three. I wanted zero. We talked about it and we compromised. We have three. But, but there's, there's not one in here today that you're not the will of God. You are the will of God. And not only are you the will of God, not, so what that means is, is you're the will of God. He adopted you and brought you in and then said, call me dad. Call me dad. Don't call me Mr. Edmondson. Call me dad. Can you imagine if a family adopted a child and brought that child in and said, now you call us Mr. and Mrs. 
That'd be horrible. horrible. And, and the, the people, people that are going through the adoption, that's not, you know, ideally, that's not what they want. They, they want somebody to call them mom and dad. They, they want that relationship. God wants that relationship with you. And, and nobody's a second thought. Nobody slid in by accident. Nobody got there by mistake. God's will was for you to have the authority to become a child. And he completed the adoption process and said, now you can call me dad. Now you can call me dad. Let me show you one more verse and then we're going to pray. Romans 8, 17 says this. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Janet, you want to take this? Thank you. Okay, 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 look, look at this. I don't know if you've ever seen it this way or not. I am an heir of God. You guys see that? So what does an heir, an heir inherit? Something. What are we going to inherit? We're going to inherit the kingdom. When God's kingdom comes, we inherit it. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? But I want you to see very clearly what this says. And we are, what kind of heirs are we? Joint heirs. What's a joint heir? Equal partners with who? With who? Okay. So let me ask you this. When Jesus prayed. When Jesus prayed, that's when Jesus prayed. Do you, do you think I was up there like this? Do you think God was like, what does he want now? Do you think, hey, we're talking about Jesus now. When Jesus prayed, do you think God's like, he's never going to get it? The Bible calls you what? What are you? You are a joint heir with Christ and equal with him in the kingdom. You've been given authority to call him dad. The Bible says in Ephesians, all spiritual blessings have already been given to you. They're already for you and stored up in heaven. This morning I'm talking about your attitude when you pray. We're not, we're, we're going to get to how to pray. But I'm going to tell you this. I can teach you the how to pray, but if you don't know who you are when you pray, you'll never get it. Who are you? If you know Jesus is your personal Savior, you are a child of God, adopted into the kingdom of God, given a full status as a child of God, a co heir with Christ himself. All spiritual blessings have already been credited to your account. That's who you are with an access to walk into God and say, Hey, Dad, this is where I'm at. Dad, this is what I got need of. There was a lot of things in my life that my dad couldn't have done for me, but there ain't one thing that he wouldn't have done for me. And all I had to do was say, Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. And I'm telling you today, Christian, so many of us, we've heard that term father so many times, but we see God more as the neighbor's father that gives us access into his house than our own father. When, when Jesus, Jesus said, you pray, pray to our Father, he wasn't saying, pray to my Father. He was saying, pray to your Father. You guys hear me today? This is not Jesus' Father that we're praying to. This is our Father. My Father that says, just call me Dad. Just call me Dad. How in the world can I have that type of access to Him? Because I've got a Savior. I've got, got a Savior who set aside all of his glory to take on my sin and my weakness that when I put my faith in him, he says, come on in. Be my co-heir. My dad will adopt you. My dad will bring you in. And my dad will treat you just like he treats me. How's that for awesome? My dad would treat you just like he treats me. And church, this is what sets Christianity apart. This is what makes us unique. Is Jesus' role in this. Now i got to hear I am. He's my father. 
I, I, I don't, don't know that I've preached this message, message but, but I've taught this, this truth a handful of times. And I'll tell you, one, one of the most liberating facts of this, this is, 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 is was, was not calling God, God Father. Father. It, it was, was not calling God, God Dad. It, it was, was calling me Son. I'm going to say it, and it's going to sound weird to you. If you're really, really legalistic, it will sound blasphemous to you. But I'm telling you this is spiritually accurate. I am a son. I am a son of God. Rick, that's who I am. I'm not just a child of God. That's too generic. You need, you need to know, know this truth. truth. You guys, you guys need, need to hear me. You need to know, know this truth. truth. Right? Raymond, I'm a son of God. Notice, Notice I didn't say the son. son. That would be blasphemous. I am a son of God. And, and when, when I pray, I say, Dad. Now that's, that's liberating. We're, We're going to get, get into the how to's, but how, how many of you know? Would, would you say with me this morning, this is a change of mindset? This is a change of mindset. I'm a son of God. Men say this with me. Say it with me. I am a son of God. Men say it. I am a son of God. Say it again. I am a son of God. Say it again. Ladies, say, say this with me. me. I, I am a daughter, daughter of God. God. Say, say it. Guys, Guys they, they were a lot louder than you. What's, What's up, up with that? that? Ladies, Ladies say, say, it say it again. Say it again. Men, say it. Say it again. Say it again. Now, now everybody, everybody say this with me. God is my Father. God is my, in church, we have got to make the connection. My father, again, if you want to, we've got to make that connection because everything else flows from this. Eventually, we're going to get to the point in prayer where we ask God for our needs. If he's the God of the universe, he's pretty busy. He can, he can do, do all, all things, things, but there's, there's a, lot a lot of big things going on. But if he's, he's my, my father, father. If he's, he's my, my father, father. Would you, you stand, stand with me this, this morning? morning? And, and we're, we're just, just going to, for, for just, just a moment, moment what we're, we're going to do is we're, we're, going, to, we're going, going to worship God as our father. A lot, a lot of you, you are like me, me. Your, your dad has passed on. We're going to worship today as our father. Kids, 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 kids who are kids, kids dead. That's, that's what we're, we're going to be. Kids, kids dead. dead. Kids, kids dead. We're going to worship him. And then, and then what, what we're going to do is we're going to have a prayer time. time. But, but the prayer time is this. The prayer time is adult children coming to dad with what, what they need us. And, and you know, know the adult, adult dad, dad and, and I, I know, know this from experience, experience both as dad, dad and son, dad, dad doesn't, doesn't want to just take care of physical needs. needs. Dad, dad wants to take care of emotional needs. needs. Dad's, Dad's okay, okay helping, you, helping you with rent, rent that you're short on. Dad's, Dad's okay, okay fixing the car. car. But Dad also would love to put his hand on your shoulder and say, it's going to be okay, I'll protect you. I'll take, take care of this. So let's lead us, lead us in one song. And in one song, let's just, if you're comfortable with it, raise your hands to heaven, let's just worship our Father this morning. Our Father this morning. Our Father this morning. He sees you today as his child, as his son, as his daughter.
he sees you today as his son, as his daughter. That's how he sees you. And you need to begin to see yourself that way. He sees me as his son. He sees me as his daughter. This is your father. This is your father. God, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. come to the altar, I want to ask you first, if you're not in a relationship with God, when I say relationship, this is father-child, you do not, you have not given your life to Christ except for the work that Jesus did for you. And if that's you this morning, I, I, I pray today that you make a choice for Christ, even this morning. With heads bowed and nobody looking around. If that's you today, I'm going to call you out. I'm going to have you come up here. I just want to be able to pray with you and talk with you at some point. But today, you say, today I want Jesus to be my Savior. I want God to be my Father. Nobody looking around. Would you just look up and make eye contact with me and put your head right back down? Anybody this morning, today, I want God to be my Father. I want God to be my Father. Thank you. I want God to be my Father. I want God to be my Father. I want God to be my Father. Now, what, now, what I, I want to ask you to do, we're just going to have, have a general, general prayer time. Okay, this is kids, kids taking care of business right now. We're going to have a general prayer time right now. If you got a need, whatever that need is, physical, financial, spiritual, emotional, whatever that need is, you're the kid and you've got a father. And the father is saying, come to me. What I want you to do is I want you to physically step out of your chair. And come here somewhere in the altar area or somewhere around this building. And what I want you to do is I want you to enter in for the next five or ten minutes. I want you to enter into a conversation with your father about what that need is. And, and, and that could be everybody in this building. But there's plenty of room in this sanctuary to accommodate. Myself, some of the leaders may come around and pray with you. But this is between you and Father right now. So if you've got a need, physical, financial, spiritual, emotional, whatever that need might be, right now, I want you to step out of the chair, come to the altar area, or move somewhere in the sanctuary, and begin a conversation with Father. We step out right now, and let's, let's, let's do some business with our Father. Nobody's moving. Everybody needs to start moving. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Start moving out. Altar, somewhere around. This is just kids talking to us. What we, what we do in the natural, natural is we call him up. Hey, Dad. What, what we, we do in the natural, natural we run over to his house. Hey, Dad. Knock, knock on the door. Walk right, right in. Whatever. whatever. Hey, Dad. Right now. And I've seen some of you as I was preaching. I've seen some of you starting to cry. I've seen some of you starting to move. I know the Holy Spirit's talking to you. Don't deny that. You don't have to come to the altar area. But somewhere in this church, somewhere in this room, find your place to talk. If you don't feel like moving very far, just move over two or three chairs. Make the physical...